Rub up your engines! Westinghouse just announced a smaller style of reactor that they're going to start building that costs less, still put out a reasonable amount of power. Now it's called the AP300. Their old one were the AP1000 that cost a lot more money, took up more space. Of course, they generated more electricity too, but they're saying this is a cost effective way of going nukes. Now they're not going to be available till 2027. And they said they can power about 300,000 homes. You can't believe a word that people tell you when it comes to what they cost because. Here's what they're saying. The AP300 is expected to cost about a billion dollars to set up. A small fraction of the expense of the full AP1000. Now these new ones do 300 megawatts. Where the old one did 1200 megawatts. So they're a lot smaller. They're four times less power. And they're saying that it's going to cost a billion dollars to set up each one. But I wouldn't believe a word they say because. Check this out. The AP1000s, the old ones, were supposed to cost around 6.8 billion each one to set it up. But you all know what's gonna happen here is what they say it's gonna cost and what it actually costs, it's generally a fraction what it actually costs because there is a power plant in Georgia that's presently adding two of these AP1000s, the big ones, right? And they're supposed to cost 6.8 billion. Well, look what's happened in Georgia. Now, the cost in Georgia has reached past 30 billion dollars so far. 6.8 it's supposed to cost, right? And now it's over 30 billion dollars. It's absolutely hilarious when you look at it from the outside. The 6.8 billion one is now costing 30 billion. And now they're saying, well, these little ones only cost 1 billion. So, you know, they're going to cost probably 5 to 10 billion by the time they actually build them. They, they always pull that crap when it comes to any kind of construction of public utilities. They did it when I was in Houston. They had a nuke that they built down there. And it just kept going over cost, over cost, over cost, over cost. Don't believe a word these corporations tell you. Oh yeah, we can do it for a billion dollars. Ten years later when it's done, well, you know, it wasn't a billion, it was more like ten billion. You can't believe any of these people telling you what the cost of the stuff is going to be in the future. It's way in the future. It takes years to make these things, right? And by the time it gets there, inflation takes over, everything costs more. Taking today's dollars and saying, here's what it's going to cost. No, none of it's true. It's all made up. And in this case, they're saying these smaller ones only cost a billion dollars each, even they only do one quarter of what the big ones do. I can't wait till they actually build these things. They got them planned. They haven't built them yet. But I can't wait till they build them and then we can see what the actual cost is. It'll probably blow your mind. Zachy DeCarry says, I think I've been a valve help. I got a 98 GMC 1500. I heard a noise. I took off the valve cover. The rocker nut had backed off and a push rod was bent. I put it in, but I keep getting misfire on stone number four. What should I do? Buy a new head, rebuild motor, pull the head. What should I do? All right. Well, you didn't get the mileage of your car. Now, let's say it's got 200,000 miles. Put another engine in. Don't bother trying to patch together an old worn out engine. And from my experience, one of those push rods get broken. Usually the cam is damaged too and the valves might have been damaged if something hit them. If you got high mileage, I'd just say put another motor in. You said you like the truck, I'd say go put another motor in if it's got a whole bunch of miles on it. There's no sense patching it together. Let's face the facts. If one valve broke or one lobe on the cam broke, the rest of everything else is pretty well worn too if it's high mileage. Go get another engine rather than patching together. From my experience over the years, guys that try to patch together motors are just working on them over and over and over again. If you want to do a motor, do the whole thing or don't do it at all. Danny says, my fame has expanded and I'm looking to trade in my 2019 Corolla LE for a new Mazda CX-50. I'm also thinking of a 2017 Lexus RX 350F Sport for my wife, a 2017 Lexus RC300 for me. What do you think? Okay, well, boy, you're changing your lifestyle, right? You're talking about going from a 2019 Corolla to two fancy sporting Lexuses. Now, if you don't mind the price, they're good vehicles, you know, you don't mind the price. You got a better job? Did you win the lottery? Something's going on. Going from a Corolla to fancy luxury Lexus sporty cars, right? Now, before you buy anything, you got to have a mechanic like me check it out when you're talking used like that. If you want to not have any hassles and deal with any nonsense of checking it out, hoping it wasn't wreck flooded, stolen, I'd say what the heck. Get the Mazda CX-50 for your wife and the kids. Get the Lexus RC300 for yourself. Because, I mean, I wouldn't advise buying two luxury used cars. You're always gambling buying a used car anyways, right? The Mazda could last quite some time. It would be a very good car for her to go around in, right? And then you could have the Lexus to go 
out, do whatever you're doing, and you're not bringing the kids or something. Uh, it's not a good idea to just go out and buy two luxury used cars. You're always taking a little bit of a gamble, and you want something that's dependable. The Mazdas are excellent vehicles. The CX-50 is great. You buy a brand new one, it's going to last a really long time before you have any problems. So that's what I'd advise doing. Karam says, should I buy this for my first car? I'm a student. I'm looking at a Mitsubishi Eclipse 2006 as my first car. The owner mentions the engine makes a weird noise, but it starts and drives. Don't buy that car. It's your first car. Let me tell you. One, Mitsubishi Eclipse are decent, cheap cars cars when you buy them new. But as they age, they have a tendency of burning off, falling apart, especially those older ones, you know? That thing's what? 17 years old. And now, don't buy that car. If you're going to buy a 17-year-old car, get a Toyota or get a Honda. They're so much better made than the Mitsubishi's are. And if the guy says the engine makes a noise, believe me, it's your first car. You don't want to buy a car that's got engine problems. You know, you didn't mention how many miles. It's probably got 100-something thousand miles. It's probably on its last legs. Don't don't buy that car. Look at Hondas and Toyotas, and they'll probably be even older than that in the price range you're probably looking at, but they can last a really long time, the Toyotas and the Hondas. I would stay away from that Mitsubishi Eclipse, especially as a first car. Now, if you were a mechanic and you knew a bunch about cars, you may go and say, oh, well, it just needs some adjustments to get rid of the engine noise, something you could do it yourself, but no, you're a first-time buyer. You'd have to pay a mechanic to fix that engine, don't buy that Mitsubishi. 1999 RDR. Recently bought a new Honda Civic, which says 87 octane with no recommendation for premium. But I put an ethanol free premium and my gas mileage went up five miles per gallon. What's up? Okay. Well, I understand ethanol has less energy than gasoline. So let's say you're using just a plain old car and you got one of those flex fuel cars where you can run that E85 that's 85% ethanol, 15% gasoline. You will get between 20 and 25% worse gas mileage using that. Now you're buying premium gas with no ethanol in it, you're going to get better gas mileage because gasoline has more energy than ethanol does. That is a logical thing. The only problem is, of course, you're paying pretty premium probably for ethanol-free premium gasoline. I see that's usually really expensive. Your car will run on anything, but yes, you will get better gas mods. Now, is it worth the extra money that you pay? Probably not, but that's what's happening. It is logical. Jerome Hall says, I got an 06 Mustang GT with a code PO171. What should I look for? Okay, that means it's running too lean. When they run lean, the first thing you look for is a vacuum leak. When your engine idling, you might hear a, a hose could be broken, something could be going on, you can get a leak in the intake manifold. A lot of times they run lean because of that. They can also run lean if your fuel filter's clogged up. Not enough fuel because the filter's clogged up. Start with the simple things. That's usually what it is. It means you get either too much air and not enough fuel or not enough fuel to the same amount of air. So check the filters and check for a vacuum leak. Zach says, how do you find a mechanic who won't rip you off? Well, do like I did. I learned how to fix cars when I was 14 because I don't trust people either. I got a video, how to find a good mechanic, Scotty. Just type that in YouTube, watch the video, give you all kinds of tips. You want to ask your friends who know about cars. Now, don't ask just any random friends who they use for a mechanic because, hey, when I was in Houston, I met people. I said, who's your mechanic? Oh, this this guy that, oh, he's, he grew up with us in Michigan and he came down here to Texas too. And the guy was totally ripping them off. Ask somebody who knows a little bit about cars, who they use. And of course, the biggest thing is generally stay away from the dealers. They've got millions of overhead each year. Who pays for the overhead you do as a customer? You're better going to a regular mechanic running his own shop who cares about his customers and doesn't have millions of dollars of overhead. Tommy says, I'm having a strange stutter when I drive at certain speeds, but it goes away when I let go of the accelerator. Could it be the oxygen sensors? Well, it could be all kinds kinds of things. If your car is not running right, you start getting some stuttering. You always start with the basics. Get it scanned with the scan tool. See if there's any codes. Always fix the codes first. Now let's say there aren't any codes. Then what you want to do is check the air filter. If it's dirty, put a new one in. Look at one of the spark plugs. They all wear about the same, and if it's worn, replace all the spark plugs. You always want to start with the simple things and work your way up. That's why you always start with the scan tool to see if there's any codes, because the codes, even though they're relatively generic. At least give you an idea. Maybe it's running too lean. Maybe it's running too rich. Maybe it's got a misfire on cylinder number four. All that data will be in when you scan it. And you, you get a $40 scan tool to give you pretty good information. You can watch my videos and learn what it means. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, 
Remember to ring that bell!